Um, so I guess I'll start. I'll start with uh, the vignette on skipping tests, uh, and then from there move to the the functions uh, that that are kind of under this uh, this heading. Um, maybe as we look at some of the arguments in more detail, although most functions don't have arguments, so there won't be too much to look at. Um, yeah. So the motivation for this 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 section is that sometimes, uh, or at least sometimes, or maybe in some contexts, you may not want to run tests. Um, and you know, the article here provides a few a few scenarios. Um, maybe you, you you're running a test that relies on usage of secrets that uh, you know you don't want to uh, share with Cramp. Um, so a, a, API uh, authentication or the like. Um, so in that case, uh, you know, you may want to set things up so that those tests run when they're run locally, but not uh, on on CI or uh, in some other some other context or, or with CRAN. Um, another motivation might be, and hopefully this isn't the case, but maybe the package you've designed only works on one or more targeted operating systems, um, at least maybe for the moment, um, and they call out. Uh, Windows, Windows here for its uh, uh, underwhelming support of UTF-8 uh, Unicode. Um, so may, maybe there are particular envir uh, computational environments, operating systems, where you wouldn't want to run a particular test that relies on the existence of, you know, maybe some some operating system. Um, uh, and, and and then lastly. Um, uh, so, so then this is kind of the motivation. You know, in short, you may want to skip some tests in certain contexts. Um, and to kind of help, help uh, package developers uh, handle those cases, there are a few, there are a few uh, functions that uh, do exactly what they say in, in, in helping you skip, um, helping you skip uh, uh, running a certain test. In certain contexts, um, so uh, for example, you can skip. Pardon me. You can skip. Uh, you can skip running tests on CRAM with a skip skip on CRAM. Um, maybe there are certain reasons you don't want it to run on CRAM. It's a long running long running test, or you know, as I as I mentioned earlier, it's a it's a test that uh, requires that you hit some um, hit some uh, API endpoint where you need authentication that you don't want to share with CRAM. Um, there's also uh, another function, uh, skip on OS, uh, where you can um, skip certain tests on a particular operating system. Um, I didn't dig into this, but maybe you might also want, maybe it's not just wholesale you skip a test, but maybe you might have different tests that you would run on different operating systems that you could target, uh, for, for example. Maybe, maybe you have a package that works um, well, that essentially does the same thing uh, on Windows, Mac, and Linux, let's say, but there's some slight differences between those, those operating systems. And so you may have a Windows test, a Mac test, and a Linux test, let's say. So you might want to skip, skip a particular operating system depending on the context in which you're, you're testing. So the, the, the device where you're running the test. Um, and then, and then there's a, also a function that's uh, skip skip on CI. So for any continuous integration system, um, like those mentioned here, GitHub Actions, Travis, Half Bear, uh, you know, maybe maybe you don't want to run a particular test for a certain reason. Well, there there's a function for that. Um, and in addition, you you have these kind of so th these are kind of uh, skipping functions that. That target a particular context, so you don't have to go about writing the logic that would say, you know, that would discern whether you're 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 running whether the test is being run on a CRAN, right, or whether it's being run on a particular OS. So these are kind of out of the box functions for for a particular use case. But maybe you have um, different use cases where you you don't you don't you want to skip based on some other different condition, uh, and so you have these more. Fundamental uh, functions that that allow you that allow you to kind of target those cases. So skip if, uh, and then skip if if not. Um, they, they go on to give this kind of funny example for skip if, uh, in the vignette, saying uh, 
you know, oh, here we are. Um, you know, if if it's Tuesday, you don't want to run the test. <laughs> silly, silly little example, but you know, maybe there's some. I don't know. I don't know what it would be. Uh, but there's some other condition right here. You're just saying, you know, if 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 the day of the week is Tuesday, the second day of the work week, then 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 skip the test. Um, Um, or you could, you know, maybe, uh, so th these are, uh, you know, the basic tests and then they're, they're also these little helpers, um, uh, where, where you could kind of, uh, you could skip based on, um, some condition. Uh, you could also skip based on some, uh, I shouldn't have said condition, but condition in the sense of ours conditions, you know, uh, like <laughs> warning or message or, or, or something, something like that. Um, so, or, or even you could have, uh, you know, uh, skip, skip, uh, when you're running a test in a certain, um, condition of an application. So let's say you have a shiny application that's, um, in dev mode, right? So maybe you want to skip a certain test in dev mode and, 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 but, but perform that test if you're in production mode, right? Um, so you have a, you can basically kind of, in this in this particular case, they're looking at like getting your getting your environment variable called danger, um, and you know if uh, uh, and and skipping uh, if it's there. Um, Just to so, to interrupt for a sec, sure. uh, scroll up especially mm -hmm. to the Tuesday one. Yeah. Like, it seems like I don't know. Maybe it's just probably just kind of randomly. This is how they happen to show it, but it feels like it would be a lot more straightforward to make the if be when it is Tuesday, put the skip inside of there and then put the return invisible true outside of the if. I had the same reaction, John. <laughs> I, I, I thought, you know, for, 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 for a uh, section that's ostensibly explaining the, these, these functions, it would be nice if they actually use the functions. Well, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, they're using something even more, even more, I guess, generic where it's just, you know, skip, skip, right? Just Yeah, like, well, and, and so, yeah, they're putting the, they have the handling of the of the kind of the con yeah. condition in the broad sense, like within 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 this function, right? So they're they're creating their own generic function. Yeah. Like Just yeah, yeah. So yeah, both using the skip if and skip if not would totally make sense. I'm not sure. I wonder if I, I don't know. I would have to dig into those to see if maybe writing in those into the function would make something weird. I don't. It shouldn't. Um, yeah. But yeah, just even just the order of where to put the skip because you know the weekday is not two, then it's okay. It's a lot easier to say if the skip weekday is two, then fail. Yeah. You know, like anyway, I thought exactly. that was interesting. Um, I think they probably wanted the two to be more mirrors of one another, and the second one is more of a skip if, or sorry, the second one's skip a skip if, if not, yeah. not, and then yeah. the first one's a skip if. Um, exactly. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're just trying to communicate with. With 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 an, a kind of a, a homespun example, like how how kind of the spirit of how skip if works. Uh, yeah, but yeah. still, it'd be nice if they just rewrote this with skip if. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, um, right. <laughs> and that's that's pretty much. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is kind of a, a, re a rewrite here, if I'm getting it right. Um, like looking for a condition and... Yeah. That, that's... Actually, although now, they, now they've got a class of skip. Um, so they're, yeah, they're trying to test that this would get skipped. Like it's a it's a meta test because it's a test of their skip test. That's mm, that's a little yeah. out there to get into the <laughs> in the help. But um, yeah, I mean, having read this section, I, I actually wasn't aware that these these existed. I mean, their existence makes perfect sense, and I think I'm going to go back and maybe rewrite. Um, you know, put these wrappers around some of my tests uh, where you know I am hitting hitting an API well, endpoint. Um, the the really yeah. nice thing is you don't, it's not even really that you, they're not a wrapper. You just put them in the, like at the start of the test yeah. and it'll like 
just move on from that test. So you don't have to worry about the formatting of, you know, putting in your code inside of the skip or anything. It's just you put the skip at the top in the uh, expect that. Yeah. Or, or the test that rather. Um, and if it's there, have you, just, have you, you used this on. before? I have. Um, okay. Trying to think. Uh, I can't think of exact cases right now, but I've definitely used them. Um, there are, a lot, I guess, there are a fair number number of things where skip on CRAN comes in. Um, yeah. Snapshots automatically skip on CRAN uh, because you can't create the snap, snapshots on CRAN, and so mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a, a extra piece that's not showing here. Uh, but yeah, I have, you know, like API things that I think I have set to skip on CRAN. Um, the skip on OS thing, it, like, yes, it's messy, but it's been like four years that are, or that Windows has supported UTF fully as far as I yeah. know, or as far as I'm aware. So it's like, get over it. Like it works, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I've definitely had cases where some of my UTF text has gotten mangled, but it may just be in the kind of handing it off between different functions and maybe some function doesn't support UTF. So the, the, pro the problem is so, a function and not the OS, but uh, yeah, not, well, and anyway. I go back to verify. Ex exactly that, that I think uh, Windows has had U UTF support for something like four years, as far as I know. Like, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I think it has. It, but I think that then it took a little while for the R implementation in Windows to stop saying, if I'm on Windows, don't bother with UTF-8 mm -hmm. or whatever it was doing. So it was kind of like it had to, they had to play together nice, I think. I, I could be totally yeah. wrong on this, but to my knowledge, uh, Windows has full UTF-8 support um in both windows 10 and 11 now yeah um anyway so then cool. from the, the skipping tests i told you it was gonna be fast <laughs> um <laughs> so so from from the uh uh from the skipping test now to the test helpers a large <laughs> block of which are basically uh um you know the skip skip if uh maybe i'll start with those first and then come to the yeah. rest um and even for these, it, it just basically you end up with a broader set of functions. My read of this is you end up with a broader set of functions that target specific use cases. Uh, so instead of you know skip on CI, uh, did I see a skip on Travis? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just general CI. Maybe there's some peccadillos about about Travis you need to accommodate. Mm -hmm. um, or perhaps this is just one of those cases where this 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 is or was our studio's kind of tool of choice, and so this is a function built for built for them and their operations. Who, who knows? Um, right. Um, so you've got this kind of generic skip uh, where you just su supply a message. Uh, skip if not some condition and a message. Skip if same general setup. Um, skip if not installed. Uh, so skip if some package is not installed. I, 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 they mentioned that in the vignette, and I'm not really sure I know of a use case for for this. Like why so, why why a package wouldn't be installed? I, I mean, maybe you want to see how something works if um, you don't have the, a, if you have like an older version of a particular package, I guess. And um, yes, and uh, you know you can have functions that are, or you can have things that are just in suggests, but then you have functions uh, that use that run if those packages are you know if those packages are installed you do these things okay and then you know on your ci you would want to set up cases where that package isn't installed to make sure um certain things happen i've actually um i guess yeah skip if not i don't know like i feel like um i think i had to write this once because they don't have it of i wanted to have skip if installed where you have mm. the opposite like i want to run a test that shows that if the package is installed um or if the package is not installed it behaves you know it errors nicely or whatever and so you would want to skip if installed on that and you have to kind of write the opposite of skip if oh, not installed but they have skip if and skip if not so you can yeah. make that work that's true that's true um it still would be a nice yeah. a nice function to have though. Yeah. Like most of the, the the most basic case is, you know, 
I have this special functionality if they have this package, but I don't want to, I don't want that test to fail because they, you know, wherever I'm testing, it doesn't have the package. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we get skip if offline, that makes, that makes sense. Although I'm a little curious about host here, host argument. String of a host name to look up. I guess it's just some. Oh, just to basically test. to see if you can if you can reach if you can reach that website. So uh, that's I, I oh, guess. so it's skip if it, it's it's not really testing whether the test is being run offline. It's whether it's testing if relative to the test that host is offline, which is yeah. interesting because that's that's really good if you do hit an API. You should include that. Mm. So if you know I'm testing a GitHub thing, if GitHub's down, I don't want my test to fail. GitHub failed, you know. Right. right. Um, so that that's interesting. I probably need to put that in some places just <laughs> for safeties. Yeah, likewise, actually. Uh, so let's see. Um, yeah, skip on CRAN. We saw skip on OS. I'm curious OS and Arch uh, architecture, I guess. Uh, okay, oh, oh so. yeah, 64 uh, M1 Mac is what that's for. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. Um, Solaris. Okay, I guess that's a BDS uh, OS. Uh, Solaris is the OS that CRAN tests and no one has access to other than now through CI, but um, it's one that there have been packages that get temporarily removed from CRAN because the tests fail on Solaris. And oh, like, man. I don't know how to fix this. No one actually uses that anymore. But, but I say no one. Like, people do, clearly. That's why they keep recording it. You know, they have old systems that are still running some, you know, some uh, automated thing. Anyway, so. Yeah. Uh, Cool. So skip on Travis Appveyor, skip on CI, uh, skip on cover. So that's um, the. I assume that's when you're doing a test coverage. coverage. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Sure how that works. Skips on continuous. Oh, sorry, uh, above that. Yeah, there are skips on okay. cover is running. Okay. Hmm. I okay. I have also had that that. Um, if you're doing weird meta programming things, like I have, a, I have a package that I really need to update one of these days for making uh, function factories and making them neat, mm. and clean, and easy to use. And I can't remember for sure, but I, I'll bet there were things in there that fought against cover because it's weird meta programming and cover doesn't want you to create this, you know, like creating a function in the course of running a test can break things. So mm, got um, it, got it. Hmm. Interesting. something like something in there, I could imagine being useful. And then um, skip it translated. Mm. I'm curious about this treatment. one. Yeah. Um. Ah, here we are. Skips if message is translated. Ah, okay. That's hmm. yeah. That's so. That is a whole thing. There's the po and, the po files. Uh, yeah, uh, that I've never done that. Um, and I can't think of one that I've even seen. But it's cool, and it should be done more. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I I really should do that. I, that uh, <laughs> uh, some of the people using my package are and think. Francophone West Africa, so I should yeah. translate translate into French. Uh, just yeah, make things mar marginally easier for them. Um, hmm, interesting. Skips if the message is translated. And so there's the message ID. Um, oh, yeah. There we go. Message ID. <clears throat> so that's not found. And it said like if you scroll down so we can see <clears throat> the message ID argument. It's oh oh up oh, sorry. just the right there. Our message identifier used to check translation. Interesting. So that's one of those that as you get into doing some translation, it's probably uh, worth checking that. Um, yeah, I feel like um, hmm. I 
it's one of those that yes, you have a whole suite of things you need to learn if you're going to do translation, right? And they'll they'll start you on the path, but it's a rare enough use case that they don't dig into it in detail. But it's cool yeah. that it is there. Well, I'll have to look into this out of curiosity, although it's probably going to be a very long uh, and winding journey. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, good. All right. So that's uh, skipping. Uh, okay. So come back to where I expected. Um, now, now there are a few others. I guess we'll look at this block. Um, determinative code is it's a determinative code testing status. Determinative code is being run as part of a test. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure I quite get the use case for that. Uh, is parallel. So test is being run in parallel. And then testing package gives the name of the package being tested. I'm, I'm not sure I really get any of these in honesty. Have, have you used oh, these, John? No. But that's intriguing. Re so the comment, the paragraph there, the point of these isn't to use the functions in your tests. It's to put them in your code. So ah. behavior changes. Uh, so I bet this is being used by, um, what is it called? Um, uh, one of the ThinkR guys had this package where you could write, you could write packages as an RMD file. Um, yeah. It has um, an origami name. Um, can't remember it. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll, I'll try to put it in the description of this video because we've got it on our 4 ds that I can find relatively easily. But yeah, there is a um, exact maybe that like I could see that being a case. Um, also, um, God, I'm trying to think. Like the thing that comes to mind is the um, Volkswagen uh, emissions testing that they had a mode that would get triggered that when it was being tested, it had lower emissions than <laughs> if it was actually driving. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's interesting. Okay. Like, and I oh, love yeah. that they, you know, they call out to just copy, you know, copy paste the actual source of the functions, but here they are, you can use them to do whatever you want. Um, it's interesting. Well, that was neat. I, I didn't immediately see yeah. that, but that, that is kind of neat. I could uh. like other than faking things, I can't think of a good good use case for this i could i guess maybe maybe if you are um like maybe change the defaults when you're testing and it might be an, a cleaner way to deal with some things like uh instead of saving to the working directory save to attempt directory um by default when you're testing so something like that i could see um but it feels like it's just as easy to just build that into the test, or it's probably yeah, easier to just build that with into the, the test. With our, uh, yeah, be able to control the environment for the tests. Uh, so I want to. Um, I'm going to have to dig into this. I'm going to have to. I, I don't have to. I would like to do a <laughs> like GitHub search and try to find has anyone uses this? Yeah. done this. Yeah, and if so, how? But it's hard because they tell you don't actually use these functions. Use the source code of these functions. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it. that's interesting. But the is parallel. I can absolutely see. Yep. Um, being useful. Uh, but yeah, that's intriguing. Um, presumably, again, I think we've said before, like there's probably a tidyverse package somewhere that uses these. Otherwise, why did they make them? Yep. Um, yep. Or I guess, or someone asked them about it. But. Um, Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it might be worth looking at the source code and see if this is kind of something that tells all of test that that tests are being run. Right? Anyway, uh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. And the the last one, which is kind of a little unsatisfying, is it, it basically just seems like it's a a, a, a wrapper for with R. Um, I need like I need to dig into this because I. I was having trouble with this. Um, hmm. So I was trying to set up, uh, I I was updating the tests for 
Slack calls and a bunch of other Slack related packages that I work on with Yanni CD. Um, and ideally I wanted to uh, just one time set up if, uh, you know, if you're in, uh, we have like modes that we set. Uh, and for most cases, like if you don't have an API key, then we totally mock everything. Um, we can, and then there's a recording mode and there's like full hit the API mode. Um, and so I wanted to have at the start of everything, set those up and at the end, tear it down. I had to build it like per test because I couldn't get this to work. And so I have more to go into on this. Like it just flat out, it just didn't work. It didn't seem hmm. to do what it says it would do. Oh, interesting. Maybe I was using it wrong. Maybe I misunderstood something, but I, so it's on my list of eventually to come in here and like submit uh, a fix on this because it didn't work how I thought it was going to work after reading the help. Um, but yeah, for, then for, for I, this one, I feel like I've I'm, used Withar, but I need to go back and see how how I used it. I, I, I yeah, I developed a package where I, I did lots of cleanup per kind of test fi test file. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things. That I think I learned just enough to do the thing, and then I, I've subsequently offloaded uh, that that <laughs> understanding. I'm sure yes. if I look back at the file, it will come rushing back. But for for the moment, I I don't remember. Yeah, I was I'm playing. I'm pretty with sure I didn't use recently, this one though. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I ended up just using the, I don't know, uh, I think a, a, the default defer, which will stop after that test file. And I was like, ah, that's close enough. That, that'll that do what I need to do. So, um, and again, that's the thing coming up at the end of this club that they are, they, they're updating how, or they're putting mocking back directly into test that. And that probably impacts a lot of the use cases for this so um did you yeah. say john that there's a draft pr for for, for that or it's merged it is oh. now okay. uh, in the dev version of test that there is a an initial like it's a, it's not the full suite of mocking um but it's you know it works i, I haven't used it but it's been merged and there was a big discussion about it um, in the thread about it. Um, and it was funny because it really looks like, uh, from the discussion, it looks like Hadley just decided one day, ah, I, I want this back. <laughs> and like he wrote the PR because there were comments from people who I thought, you know, I would think would have heard about it. And they were like, woot, you know, like, <laughs> so um, anyway, it was, uh, I, I don't know yet, um, but I think, I think this is confusing. <laughs> Um, or it's possible I was just doing something weird. So I need to go back and play it again and see if I can understand this. Yeah. And that's all right. And that's it. So that's the section. <laughs> that's the section. Cool. Yeah. Those, those turned out to be pretty easy. Um, mostly because there weren't too many arguments to look at, uh, in, right. the, in, the, in the skipped family of functions. All right. Well, so the, plan we, we have the next two weeks off because it's us and then it's us daily savings and then europe daily savings is actually two weeks later this time so mm. thus the full, full two weeks off so we'll meet again in three weeks on the on march 31st um and i have it on the docket to have uh test fixtures and i a uh, brief look at with our so actually I'm going to go ahead and take that one. Okay. Um, actually, I'm not. I'm not going to put my name there because we'll talk about that. I've got all kinds of stuff. I'm going to be out of town that week. Um, so maybe I'll do this. But that would be where we should check out that teardown and end. Like, mm. look at the source code. Yeah. That is the, yeah, because that test fixtures uh, vignette is probably where I learned about the teardown uh -huh. um, environment. It's kind of funny that. Yeah, so um, so we'll we'll come back to that one in that week. And um, I said I you know I included a very brief look at with her in that because you can't talk about test fixtures like the whole point of the whole idea is a text fixture is something that you set up and tear down. So you use with our like that is just that's the idea. 
you need that package in order to do any of that stuff. We're not going to go into the full range of options that with our has, but get the basic side, basic ideas. Um, and then we'll do one final week for custom expectations and kind of a any other thoughts that we have about uh, test that, and then we'll move on. So I'll probably I'll, I'll get a, a sur survey up in the channel for us to start planning out what are we going to do next, whether we want to keep going with more test that uh, style of packages or what. Oh, and yeah, that final week when we do custom expectations, we'll probably also talk about mocking there because I think it's I think right. it has enough info for us to talk about it. Um, and then that might lead like the mocking, like mockery and, and mocker, um, would be somewhere I want to go, except it's kind of in flux right now. So maybe oh, really? we should okay. put those up in that with those functions coming back in to test that the external packages might not be as useful anymore or mm. as needed. Um, and so I, I think I would suggest that we wait, uh, do some other you know, whatever. We'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, these were really, really useful. Um, there were definitely things that I did not know about in that block. So that's always uh, helpful to learn. Um, and hopefully we'll have another block of those in three weeks. I think so. All right. <laughs> All right. See ya. All right. Bye-bye.